Hi there! In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Synth Voice module, which is new in Voltage Modular 2. Synth Voice is based around a lot of classic semi-modular systems of the past and features the same normalized connection system. However, since we're using it in a modular environment, this allows you to harness the power of a classic semi-modular synth inside a fully modular environment. With all the available inputs and outputs, we can quickly elevate what this synth would be capable of by using it in a fully modular environment and using it as kind of the core brain of an entire patch. Before we dive into everything today, let's take a listen to the final sound and take a look at what we'll be creating. This is the patch we'll be deconstructing today, so it's based around the synth voice, it's got an arpeggiator and a handful of different layers, including a generative layer, so this should be exciting. Let's take a listen. This entire thing is a basic arpeggiated sound all based around the synth voice, but I've extended it with some added oscillators, filters, LFOs, delays, and even added in this generative layer to create a patch that's unique every time you play it. Then, as you probably noticed, I also have a couple of clock dividers in here to create a more complex rhythm rather than just a straightforward arpeggiated pattern. Before we dive in and really start breaking down the patch, let's first take a look at the synth voice module itself and learn a little bit about how it works so you can better utilize it for your own patches. This here is the synth voice module itself, and as I mentioned, this has normalized connections, so what this means, similar to the DCO60, is all we need to do to actually start using it is just route the output. So all we need to do is grab our VCA out here and bring it into our main output, and then we can start playing this module. <laughs> How the normalized connection system works here is we have a preset routing of everything that happens, but we can override that routing by sending a signal to a destination. For example, let's take a look at the filter here and drop the cutoff down. Now let's go into our envelope and adjust this to be more of a pluck sound. Here in the bottom we can see these orange labels, and what these represent is the default routing. Here we can see the ADSR label, so by bringing up this slider this means that the envelope here will also target the filter. So let's give it a play and we should hear the filter being modulated by the envelope. So as you can hear, the filter is now being modulated by the envelope. To override that connection, we can just patch in something new. Instead of the ADSR here, let's get our sample and hold and bring the output of that into the ADSR input. So now the sample and hold will control the filter and it won't be using the envelope. Let's take another listen. With that in mind, this is actually somewhat of a self-contained modular environment. You're free to patch any of the inputs and outputs together within the module itself to create something new. However, since this is voltage modular, this means we can also utilize external sources and destinations to create or send modulation. So that's really what's going on here. I started off by patching a few things together within synth voice, and then I started extending it out by sending it to different destinations and tying everything together. This is going to be a little bit of a complicated patch, but it is actually pretty simple once you understand the idea. First off, let's take a look at the synth voice module itself and talk about the settings in here. The first thing to know is with these two oscillators, I'm actually outputting the triangle waves rather than the defaults, which we can see here is the saw and the pulse. To do that, I just grab the output of the triangle and routed it into VCO1 and then VCO2 here. To create a bit more modulation and interest, I've actually got the second oscillator down an octave as we can see here, and the detune is very, very slight at minus 0.1. To create a bit more interest to the sound, I've utilized FM, so I've overridden the AR envelope here and used the saw output of the first oscillator. So what this means is I'm FMing the second oscillator with the first oscillator by overriding the connection for the AR envelope. Outside of that, there's not much else happening inside of Synth Voice. I've got the envelope adjusted here to create more of a plucked sound, and then I mixed things over here with the mixer. In terms of the mix, I blended in my oscillators here, and then introduced just a little bit of ring mod at about 60%. I just found that gave the patch a little bit more grit. Then up here at the top, I've got a little bit of reverb at about 85%. This just adds a little bit of space and dimension to the sound. So now let's break down the arpeggiator and talk about how that's being used because as you can see by hovering over here, it's going to quite a few different spots. For the arpeggiator module, all I did is grab the MIDI from host here to the MIDI input. The clock in isn't being used because I'm just allowing it to do its own thing and setting the rate there, but if you wanted to sync this, you could use a sync divider. Down here on the rate, I have this at about 5.2 hertz or so, and then I've got the gate time pretty short at about 30 milliseconds. 
The pattern and octave range here you could set to whatever you like. I just left it on the defaults because I thought that sounded okay. The gate output here, as you can see, is going to two different destinations in the synth voice module. First up, I've got it going to the ADSR envelope here, so that way the arpeggiator is triggering the gate of the synth voice module. I'm not triggering it by playing notes on the keyboard, it's the arpeggiator that's then sending out a gate signal. Then I'm also sending it to the input here of the sample and hold, so this way we're getting a synced sample and hold effect. Now that we've got the gates wired up, we need to target the pitch, so I've used the CV out here to go into both of the oscillators. To do that, I went into the first oscillator for the pitch in here, and then the second oscillator for the pitch in here. Let's bring in our wires, and that's everything that's happening here inside of Synth Voice. So then I sent the VCA out to a stereo mixer. So I'm using the stereo mixer for a couple reasons we'll see later on. Next up, let's break down this layer because it's actually duplicated down here. To create the complex rhythm of this patch, I've utilized the clock divider, and in order to make sure everything's synced up and working correctly, I also utilized a sample and hold. This clock divider starts off by receiving the gate output of the arpeggiator. Then I'm sending that, after dividing by 4, to the input of the envelope generator here, as well as the external trigger of the sample and hold. The sample and hold here is receiving the CV out of the arpeggiator, so this means it's getting the pitch from the arpeggiator and putting it into the sample and hold, and then holding that value based on the clock divider. If you don't follow this step, you're going to get pitch changes while the gate isn't changing, which can be kind of cool, but it sounds a bit weird in this case because there's just so much going on in this patch. So we're getting the pitch from the CV output of the arpeggiator into the sample and hold. It's being triggered by the clock divider, which is then also receiving the gate from the arpeggiator. The output of the sample and hold here is going to the pitch CV in of this vintage oscillator. The vintage oscillator just goes out through a basic subtractive patch here. So we've got the envelope generator. This goes into our amplifier, as you can see here. The input of the amplifier is the square out of the vintage oscillator. The output of that goes into this filter. Then I've got a little bit of modulation. The output of the low pass goes into the stereo delay. The output of that goes into the second channel of the stereo mixer. That's really the core thing to understand here to get these complex layered arpeggiated sounds that have multiple rhythmic elements going on. By utilizing the clock divider module, you can create very complex polyrhythmic patches pretty easily just by holding down a single note. To get a bit more movement here, I've got the pulse width mod coming in from a mini LFO on the triangle. This is really, really slow. This is actually down at 0.24 Hertz. So just a subtle, small amount of modulation. As you can see here, the pulse width mod is only about negative 0.2 or thereabouts, just a very, very small amount, and that just helps give things a bit more movement and interest. The modulation of the filter here is coming from two different destinations, but I actually got rid of the first, so the only one to worry about is this frequency mod 2, which is coming from the triangle output of another mini LFO down here. So this triangle out goes into the frequency mod in of this filter up top. This is on low pass, cutoff is down at around 800 hertz, resonance is pretty high, and that's all there is to it. To sync up the delay here, you'll see that the external sync is engaged. That is receiving the clock output of the arpeggiator. So I sent the clock out to the external sync in, and then I can get tempo sync delays. This is particularly important for patches like this where there's a lot of rhythmic elements going on. And if you don't have it tempo synced, it can be a cool way to create some kind of delay clouds of things happening. But I want this to be a bit more usable in like a song, so I want things to be tempo synced and aligned to the beat. As you can tell down here, this entire setup is actually just duplicated. The only thing that wasn't duplicated here is this clock divider module because there's two parts to it. So we have two clock dividers, so I didn't need to create a whole new module. I just gave it a different division value and sent the signals in the same way. So as you can see, it gets the gate out from the arpeggiator module up top, and then it's routed to the same spots, the external trigger of the sample and hold and the gate input of the envelope generator. Other than that, the settings and modulation are exactly the same. The pulse width mod here is coming from the LFO up top. It's relatively slow in a very slight amount. Then this filter over here is getting frequency mod 2 from the second mini LFO, very slight amount, very slow. Cutoff is exactly the same, resonance is more or less the same. This filter is also a low pass output, however if you recreate this patch try different filter outputs because it is a multi-mode filter or try outputting multiple versions of it. You could output the low pass and the band pass and run them through some different delays and get a totally different result. Now, finally, let's break down this layer, which is the semi-generative layer of things happening underneath this patch, and that's what makes it different every time I play. First up is this clock divider here, and this one is slightly different. Rather than getting the gate output, we're getting the clock output of the arpeggiator here. So the clock goes into the clock divider, this is divided by three, and that goes into the clock input of a random task. 
We'll talk in a bit more detail about the random task module in another video, but the only thing to know is this is essentially a random voltage generator that's a little bit more intelligent than that. I didn't touch any of the settings here and we're not going to go over them in this video, but all you need to know is I routed the CV out of that into the input of a sample and hold as well as the frequency mod of the filter. The CV range here can be set to whatever you'd like. I just cranked it all the way up. This gives us a larger range of values so we can get more variation in the pitch we're going to get from this module. The external trigger of the sample and hold here is coming from this clock divider. So the output of that goes to the clock input of the random task as well as the external trigger of the sample and hold. This means I'm holding that value, making sure that everything syncs up nicely. The output of the sample and hold then goes into a quantizer. Because the random task module is generating random voltages and we want to get pitch from this and make sure it's in key and in the proper scale, a quantizer is a very important module to pair with it, otherwise you're just going to get random notes. The arpeggiated pattern I've been playing was in the key of B, so I set this to B and minor pentatonic. Then the output of that goes to the pitch CV in here of the vintage oscillator. I've also got this tuned up an octave, but experimenting with the range can be fun. I found it just added a nice kind of sparkly bit of fairy dust up top. For the output of this, I'm using the triangle wave, so that goes into the amplifier. We've got this envelope generator here. The gate from this envelope generator is actually coming from the gate output of the arpeggiator up top. And then the rest is just a standard subtractive patch. Envelope goes to amplifier ZV. This amplifier outputs to the filter. Low pass goes into this delay. This delay feeds out, and that is track four of the stereo mixer. Finally, you can see on these stereo delays, I've got the spread turned all the way up, so that makes sure that they are very wide stereo ping-ponging delays. You could experiment with this, but I just found it created a nice, big, lush, arpeggiated sound. One last bit of modulation I've added just to make things slightly more interesting is this final mini LFO up here. This is a triangle wave output, which goes to the LFO input here of this filter. So this way, I'm just getting a subtle drifting movement to that nice kind of resonant filter that the synth voice module has. To close things off and provide just a bit more context as to what exactly is happening one piece at a time, let's solo out each channel of the mixer and take a listen to the individual parts. First up here on channel 1, we have the output of synth voice, which is just a basic ARP and has a bit of reverb. Part 2 is this first layer of the sample and hold ARP, which is divided by 4. If we hold this out, this is what we've got. Track 3 here is this third layer, which is the same thing, but divided by 2. And when we play these two together, you get a more complex rhythm. To make things even more sonically interesting, I also detuned this vintage oscillator here in the second layer up a fifth, so you can do this to create some harmonies and extra parts to your arpeggiated patches, and it's kind of fun to give you almost a fake form of polyphony in a way. Finally, channel 4 here, if we solo that out, is this little generative layer down on the bottom, which has a clock divider going by 3, so this creates a totally different rhythm, and because it's running off the random task, it's just playing different notes than what I'm playing with my hand. So we've got that soloed out, and this is what it sounds like. And now, if we put it all together, this is the final result. And that wraps everything up for this video and for this patch. To learn more about Voltage Modular or pick it up for yourself, you can head over to cherryaudio.com.